I made that earlier and it took about 12 seconds. Uh, but I did it. I thought it looked cool. I think it looked cool. Can't wait to get a copyright strike on that. Hello! Welcome to the uh, Wizarding World exhibition match. Oh, what a fun time we're going to have. There's going to be some craziness. I don't have to go to work today, so we're already in the clear. Uh, this is how it's going to be. It's a fun exhibition. we got five people, four people who really love Harry Potter, and one who filled in last minute. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be fun. Um, so the way this is going to work are uh, there's three rounds of Wizarding World Trivia. Uh, all the competitors are going to answer uh, the questions. There's 10 questions in each round. First two rounds, uh, round one is uh, years one through four of Harry Potter. Round two is Fantastic Beasts questions. And then round three is years five through seven. If you get a question right, you gain a point. You get a question wrong, you lose a point in round three. Uh, let's bring in the competitors. Let's start off with Albert. Albert, Hello. welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited for this match. Uh, this should be this should be pretty fun and also awesome intro right there. Hey, thank you. Uh, next, we'll bring in the macaw, Maggie Vercala. How are you doing? I'm good. I realized I made a mistake in wearing this shirt because it says the name of Co uh, Bowman's team. I should have worn the other one. <laughs> that's that's accurate but you, you didn't know what was gonna happen uh let's let's bring in that guy right now caleb boatman is here uh he's filling in for jim green because jim green didn't show up what a sh no i'm just kidding jim jim we love jim but he's doing something else weird i don't know boatman how are you feeling <laughs> i'm not prepared for this I legitimately have not watched a Wizarding World movie since we lost to Knights of Ren. So, will you get one question right? Um, I'm. I, I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's bring in uh, Mr. Lucas. Lucas, how are you doing? You've recently played in a Wizarding World match. I did. Um, yes, and I enjoyed your uh, your. Clevy witticisms during the opener. I'm I'm very sad that Jim Green could not get out of his FBI duties and had to uh, ditch. But uh, you know, it's, I'm glad Boatman's here. He's a wonderful guy. We'll have a lot of fun. Absolutely. And then, last but not least, Amaru is here, who also played in said match. Amaru, uh, how are you doing? Are you excited? Uh, I am. If um, this uh, private chat is anywhere as hilarious as the last Wizarding of the World match, we will have a good time. Uh, Lucas can. Can attest to that. Uh, all right. Uh, so, guys, I already explained it a little, but I'll explain it again. Three rounds, ten questions a piece. Round one is years one through four. Round two, uh, Fantastic Beasts. Round three, um, all uh, years five through seven. In round three, if you get the question right, you gain the point. You get the question wrong, you lose the point. Um, all of you have three repeats and one challenge rule. Any questions as we get this thing rocking and rolling? All right, cool. Let's get going. Question one in round one. In The Prisoner of Azkaban, Ron says his family traveled to where on vacation over the summer? Caleb Boatman rushing to the board. Does he have one right? I think he might. This is exciting. The Good only for point him. I'll get all game, and I'm okay with that. Round one <laughs> is a little easier, but fine. Don't discount my <laughs> point. <laughs> Two, one, hands down. Uh, let us start with a boatman. Egypt. And Albert. Egypt. And Amaru. Egypt. And Lucas. Egypt. And Maggie. Egypt. All right. Clean sweep on question one. Question two. In the Sorcerer's Stone, who teaches... Charms class. Um, I wish I could go to, uh, No. Okay, no, <laughs> I'll say no. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Um, we're going to go in just a random order. Uh, Maggie. Uh, Professor Flitwick. And let's go to Boatman. Flitwick. And uh, Lucas. Professor Phileas Flitwick. All right, Albert. Good for you. Flitwick. <laughs> and Amaru. Oh, All right. Another clean sweep. 
as we get into the next one. Name all three of the unforgivable curses as seen in the Goblet of Fire. And I am looking for the blank curse for all three. Not necessarily what they say when they cast the spell. If that makes sense. Oh. Thank you. I'll give a little extra time on this one since you're having to list some stuff. All right. Looking for an answer in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's start with Boatman. Please don't. Cruciatus <laughs> curse, killing curse, and the torture one, which also might be Cruciatus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go to Lucas. Uh, we've got the Cruciatus curse, the Imperious curse, and the killing curse. All right. You get a cookie. Uh, let's go over to Albert. Uh, I missed the Cruciatus curse. I wrote on killing curse and imperious curse. All right, uh, Maggie. Yeah, I didn't have it. I had death, confundus, and pain because I couldn't remember any of the names. And Amaru. Cruciatus, imperious, curse. All right, so Amaru and Lucas hit that one as we get into the next question. What did Harry do for Lockhart in detention in the Chamber of Secrets? Um, I tested this match on one Nicholas J. Tuig and one Robert Bilius Parker. Five. They so, did okay. So Nick Tuig and a scrub. <laughs> what? Hands down. Uh, let's start with Albert. Respond to his fan mails. And we'll go to Amaru. Answer fan mail. Maggie? Said help with fan mail. Uh, let's go to Boatman. I was off. I said sign autographs. And Lucas. Answer this fan mail. Yeah, I was looking for fan mail, so everybody but Boatman hitting that one as we get into the next one. In the Sorcerer's Stone, what is the Dursley's address? And I'm just looking for the number and the street. So not the full street, not the full mailing address. Yeah, you don't need to give me the full thing, like with a zip one, code. One, with, yeah, little, yeah, no. I don't think there is a zip code in there. Really. I was about to say I don't know if there is or not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there when isn't. I, when I when I tested it, I definitely got the full thing from both of those people, and I'm like, that's not what I'm, no. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Let's start with Amaru. In uh, Little Wind Jinx, sorry, for Perfect Drive. All right, and Maggie. For Perfect Drive. All right, Boatman. British addresses need more numbers. I said 314 Privet. <laughs> uh, Lucas. Number four, Privet Drive. All right, and Albert. For Privet Drive. All right. Next question. What was the last message written on the wall in blood in the Chamber of Secrets? And I am looking for the exact Shamalama Ding Dong. Exact wording, if you will. Right now we've got Lucas and Amaru, both with five. Maggie and Albert behind with four. Boatman's got two. Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. All right, that's one repeat from Lucas. What was the last message written on the wall in blood in the Chamber of Secrets? <clears throat> I like this movie, actually. A lot of people are like, the movie's too long and boring. I think it's fun. Lockhart rules. Five. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's go to Maggie first. Her body will lie in the chamber forever. Go to Boatman. I said enemies of the air beware. Lucas. 
Her body will lie in the chamber forever. Albert. No, if I wrote the girl has been killed. And tomorrow. If I got the one word I thought was correct wrong, I said her bones will lie in the chamber forever. So you're all technically wrong. It's her skeleton will lie uh, in the chamber forever. So I brought you all down with me. <laughs> okay, next question. What is the name of the special ability that both Peter Pettigrew and Sirius Black have in The Prisoner of Azkaban? All right. Nancy, five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's start with Boatman. Animagus? And Lucas. They are Animagus. All right. And Albert? Animagus. Amaru? That's what they are. Animagus. And Maggie? Animagus. Animagus is correct. All right. Next question. <clears throat> what is the second name to emerge from the Goblet of Fire in the Goblet of Fire? Also one of my favorites in the series, both book and movie in very different ways. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's go to Lucas first. Fleur Delacour. And we'll move over to Albert. Elsa Fleur Delacour. And Amaru. Fleur Delacour. And Maggie. Fleur. And Bowman. Fleur Delacour. That is correct. All right, everyone's sweeping that one. All right, penultimate question of the round. What type of food do Harry and Ron tease Crab and Goyle with in order to knock them out in the Chamber of Secrets? <clears throat> if anybody wanted to knock me out, hit me in the head from behind to steal some of my hair, just float some food in front of me as well, and I, I'd be done so. Cheeseburger or a sandwich of some sort. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Albert. A muffin cake? Uh, Mamaru. How close is that to a cupcake? And let's go over to Maggie. I said cupcakes as well. All right. And Caleb? I also said a cupcake. And Lucas. I don't know what they called it, but it looks like a cupcake. So I actually have cupcake or muffin because it's kind of hard to tell exactly what it is. I'll give you all the point. Yay. I don't think they ever say it either, and it's very... They and don't, it's, and it's an ambiguous looking, like, yeah. big frosting. Some of them have frosting, some of them don't, so it's, like, hard to tell which one is yet. Yeah. So we'll give you all the point. Um, all right, so we'll go into the final question. In the Goblet of Fire... Who told Ron that Dean was told by Pavardi that Hagrid was looking for Harry? This is uh, one of my favorite moments in this movie. Very funny moment. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's go to Amaru first. Oh, Seamus. And let's go to Maggie. I also said Seamus, but I spelled it terribly wrong. Boatman? I also spelled Seamus terribly. Like Lucas? I scribbled Amaru. I did not get this one. And Albert? I wrote the Neville. Uh, Seamus is correct. Uh, Seamus was told, uh, told Dean, told by Pavardi, that whole thing. Yes, Seamus is the answer. Uh, so at the end of round number one, years one through four, I have Amaru in the lead, only missing the skeleton, uh, question. And then Lucas and Maggie right behind with eight. Um, Albert, 
with seven, Boatman with six. So more uh, than five. <laughs> not bad at all. All right. So we're going to get into round number two. This is going to be all Fantastic Beasts questions from Here's Fantastic where the Beasts starts. and where to find them and Fantastic Beasts, the crimes of J.K. Rowling. Okay. <laughs> Question number one in round number two. Who does Newt turn into using Polyjuice Potion when sneaking into the French Ministry in the crimes of Grindelwald? I have many thoughts on these movies. Uh, yeah. I, I think I'm in the minority by saying they're both equally terrible. I think they're both just awful movies. <laughs> I agree with five, you. Five, four, three, two, one. We're going to start with Maggie. That's yes. And Boatman. I said his brother. I was looking for the exact name. Uh, Lucas. Fair enough. I, I, did, I did the combo of both their answers. His brother, Theseus. We could accept that. Uh, Albert. Theseus Commander. And Amaro. Theseus Commander. All right. Next question. What does Makuza stand for? I knew you were going to ask this question. Did you, though? I, I did. Hopefully you get it right then. I think I will. All right. Looking for an answer. It five, four, three, two. Repeat there. All right. That's gonna be the first repeat for Amaru. What does Makuza stand for? A very close match right now. Still can go either way, especially when we start gaining points, losing points in the next round. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's start with Lucas. Magical Congress of the United States of America. And we'll move over to Albert. Magical Congress of the United States of America. All right, and Amaru? I suck at politics, apparently, because I forgot Congress is a word and said court. <laughs> All right, and Maggie? Magical Congress of the United States. And Boatman? Uh, I said magical administration of charms for the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good guess. Um, with that, um, I believe I've got Maggie now ties with Lucas and Amaru, They and Lucas ties up Amaru, so... Uh, and then Albert's got nine, a boatman still with six as we get into the next one. The Crimes of Grindelwald takes, pri takes place primarily in what year? Uh, Jim Green done with whatever he was doing before. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is too late for Jim Green. Too late for Jim Green. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's start with Albert. 1927. And we'll go over to Amaru. 1927. And next, let's go to Maggie. 1927. And Boatman. Samsonite. I was way off. 1938. And Lucas. I was also off. 1930. 1927 is correct. So Maggie and Amaru take the lead with that one at 11 points. Next question. What is the name of Newt's bow truckle? I figured I should probably ask a question about a beast. Uh, you should ask all the questions about the beast. Uh, would I call this creature a beast? Nah. But he is a thing. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, we are going to go to Amaru. <clears throat> Pick it. And Maggie. Pick it. 
Boatman. Pick it. Lucas. I don't pay attention to animals. I don't have this. All right, and Albert. Pick it. All right, pick it is correct. All right, next question. Other than Muggle, name two other names for people who don't use magic, as said in the Fantastic Beasts series. There are, there, I will be lenient on spelling. There are, uh, yeah, I just need two. I don't even know how to spell <clears throat> Also, Robert Parker told me that last question was uh, challengeable because he has uh, many bow truckles. And I said, shush, five, <laughs> four. I said, there's a main one, motherfucker. <laughs> one. Ten, oh, okay. Get a repeat in there for Amari. Other than Muggle, name two other names for people who don't use magic, said in the Fantastic Beasts series. So Amari's second repeat. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, we are going to start with uh, Maggie. So, nomad and non magic in the French, but I don't know how to spell in French. So. Uh, Caleb. I said nomad and non magic, and I don't think you can <laughs> give me the French points. Uh, Lucas. I could not remember the French, but I only had nomad. All right, Albert. I couldn't remember the French one, so I wrote no match and regular humans. <laughs> Amaru. I'm with you, Albert. I said no match and human. <laughs> All right, so Maggie, the only one hitting that, we would have accepted um, no mage, non magique, or no spells. Uh, it was also one that Grindelwald says at some point in that stupid movie. Okay, um, next question. Which beast does Newt calm and capture? using a cat toy in the Crimes of Grindelwald. And I will be very lenient on the spelling on this one because it is hard to say and pronounce and spell. And so I will be, if you're even close, I will give it to you. But if you put bird or cat or dog, that is no. Fine. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's start with Boatman. A rumpin. That's wrong. Uh, I think Lucas. that's a Pokemon, too. I don't have it. Uh, I believe that is a beast, but uh, Albert. Zoom. And Amaru. Zoom. And Maggie. Zoom. All right. Well, that was everybody, right? I'm not crazy. I just went through everyone. Okay, yeah, so that is correct. So Maggie, Albert, Amaru, get that one as we get into the next one, which is what does the Bogart turn into when Newt steps in front of it in The Crimes of Grindelwald? Um, if I stepped in front of the Bogart, it would probably turn into the ocean. I'm scared of the ocean. I don't like the ocean. I don't like the outdoors. Five. Just four, an open door. Three. <laughs> two. <laughs> one. <laughs> Bends down. That's funny. Um, Lucas, let's start with you. Is it an office? Albert. I wrote down an office desk because he's scared of having a regular desk job. Amaru? The desk. And Maggie? And the desk office. And Boatman. I don't know, but for me, it would turn into a Wizarding World exhibition match. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm inclined to give it to everybody but Mr. Boatman. Uh, yeah, I was looking for office job or desk. It's physically a desk, but he says because of an office job. So uh, everybody but Boatman's going to hit that one. 
as we get into the next question, which is the eighth question in this round. What is the full name of Credence's adoptive mother in Fantastic Beasts and where to find them? Um, just reading these questions reminds me more and more of how much I don't like these movies, but yet I watch them. <laughs> I have to. That's right. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, I believe we are back up to Maggie. Mary Lou Fairbone. And we'll move over to Boatman. I just want to remind everyone I have a Warzone title. I'm good at something. <laughs> uh, let's go over to Lucas. I had the last name, not the first, and I just remembered that I. Don't remember these movies very well. Albert. Mary Lou Barebone. And Amaro. Mary Lou Barebone. Mary Lou Barebone, correct. All right, let's get to the penultimate question of the round. Which beast does Newt use to help Tina escape from Makuza in Fantastic Beasts and where to find them? Um, I remember when. I saw the crimes of Grindelwald the first time and we were sitting in the theater and the Warner brothers logo came up. And then after that, a wizarding world logo came up and I went, Oh, they're getting a little excited. Aren't they? Oh, okay. JK five, four, three, two, one pens down. Uh, let's go to, I don't even remember anymore. Caleb. Uh, I chose my favorite fantastic beast. Todd. <laughs> Lucas. Uh, Phoenix? And uh, Albert. Swooping Evil? Amaro. Swooping Evil. And Maggie. Swooping Evil. Swooping Evil is correct. All right. We are now into the final question of Fantastic Beasts. What is the full name of the brother that Lita had? Uh, I'm sorry. Let me start over. What is the full name of the brother that Lita had that died as a child in the crimes of Grindelwald? Got a little tongue twisted. <clears throat> right now, we have someone in the lead. Will they keep that lead after this question? Let's find out. Five, four. Three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's go to Lucas first. No, this isn't right. Rodolphus Lestrange. And Albert. I don't know. Yusuf Lestrange. Amaru. Corvus Lestrange of the fifth kind. Corvus Lestrange of the fifth. Maggie. I just said Corvus Lestrange. And Boatman. Malcolm Goldie Lay. <laughs> <laughs> The answer was Corvus Lestrange. All I needed was Corvus Lestrange. Uh, so with that, we have finished the Fantastic Beasts round. We move on to the third round, which is years five through seven, a.k.a. Order of the Phoenix, Deathly Hallows, part two. Remember, you get the question right, you gain a point. You get the question wrong, you lose the point. As it stands right now, Boatman is in fifth place with seven points. Uh, we then have Lucas in fourth with 11. Albert is in third with 15, Amaru is in second with 17, and Maggie is in first with 18. So it's a very close game as we get into this round. All right. So uh, question number one in round three. What is the full name of the Minister of Magic at the start of Deathly Hallows Part 1? been a very close game that fantastic beasts round <clears throat> was a savior and also a uh, little evil person with a uh, scythe in the background for some people so five four three two one pens down let's uh start with maggie if i raise the age because i am Wisconsin, but rufus scrimgeour okay and right. boatman Rufus Scrimgower. I don't know if you can accept that. I might be off, but... Uh, let's go to uh, Lucas. 
Rufus Scrimger. And Albert. Rufus Scrimger. And Amaru. Rufus Scrimger. Yeah, Boatman, I don't think I can give it to you. Just that that it was a little spelling was a little off there. And yeah, sorry. Uh, so with that, uh, everybody gets a point except for Boatman. Boatman loses one point as we get into the next question. In the Order of the Phoenix, Snape gives Harry lessons in what per Dumbledore's request? Can I get a technical? I did not hear you at all. Yes, absolutely. Technical repeat. In the Order of the Phoenix, Snape gives Harry lessons in what per Dumbledore's request? Uh, Boatman, who worked really hard to be here in this match today, doing really well, and I feel for him. He's a great friend for stepping in last minute. Everybody praise the Boatman. Five, four, three, two, one. We are going to start with the Boatman. What you got? I don't know what it's called, but it's like the thing with the mind thingy. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Lucas. It's called Occlumency. And Albert. Occlumency. I don't know how to say it. And Amaru. Yep. Occlumency. That's the thing that it's called. And Maggie. Awful, yes. All right. So everybody but Boatman getting that one. All right. Next question. What was Slughorn planning on doing with the mead that poisons Ron in the Half-Blood Prince? Uh, Half-Blood Prince being my favorite Potter film and book. I enjoy the book a lot, and I was not let down by the movie. I very much enjoy it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's start with Lucas. It was going to be a gift for Dumbledore. And Albert. He gives it to Albus Dumbledore. Amaru. Give it to Dumbledore. Maggie. Give it to Dumbledore as a gift. And Boatman. Probably peeing in it. Fun fact, he's a pervert. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Big yikes for me, dog. Uh, the answer was give it to Dumbledore as a gift. Uh, so everybody gets that point except Boatman. All right. I think all it's called this point is to score negative points by the end of the match. <laughs> Once he hits zero, he's, he could be done after that. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, next question. Can I please score negative points? I want the record no. for the lowest score. No. <laughs> um, all right, next question. Name both characters that Harry talks with after burying Dobby in separate rooms at the start of the Deathly Hallows Part 2. So just to clarify, I'm not looking for who, like, Harry, Ron, Hermione. I'm looking for the people that he talks to in the two separate rooms up at the beginning of the movie. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's start with Albert. Garrick, Ollivander, and Griphook. Amaru. Ollivander and Griphook. Maggie. Ollivander and Griphook. Boatman. I said Ollivander and Creature. And Lucas. Ollivander and Griphook. Ollivander and Griphook is correct. All right, so we move on to the next one. This one I am going to be a little picky on spelling. Uh, if, if the uh, just... I will be a little semi-lenient, but also, like, it needs to be right. You can't just say a random weird word. All right. What does R-A-B stand for in the Deathly Hallows Part 1? One of the people I tested this on said it funky. We all know what it is. We all know what I'm talking about. And uh, they got a little sassy with me. Got a little oh. sassy. Five, four, three. All right. That's the first repeat from Maggie. 
What does R A B stand for in the Deathly Hallows Part One? Um, I bought a new board today. It was seven dollars at Target. Um, no excuses. I'm pretty right. sure that's the exact board I have right here. It's very nice. I like it. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Let's start with Amaru. Regulus Arcturus Black. Maggie. I didn't have it. I Regulus something black, but I couldn't remember. Okay. Uh, Boatman. Rabies are for bad boys. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Lucas. <laughs> it's Regulus Arcturus Black. And Albert. I wrote Ar Regulus Arturo Black. All right. So with that, um, Amaru hits, Lucas hits. Everyone else loses a point. Uh, so we now have Amaru is in the lead uh, with uh, 22. Maggie is behind with 21. Albert has 18. And Lucas has 16. So still anybody else's game as we get into the second half of the round. Next question. What does Ron have a full plate of when he sits down between Harry and Ginny during the Weasley Christmas party in the Half-Blood Prince? How specific um, does this need to be? Right. Not very specific. So you don't have to name the specific thing, the specific type of thing. I have no idea what the end. I don't know what the I can't, I can't say. I can't say anything without giving anything away. I will. We'll see. If you, you're, you're free to use your challenge, if you have it. So. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you at this point. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. I believe we're back up to Maggie. I said little pigs. Um. Let's go to Boatman. Uh, nachos, but like without soul. Oh my God, Lucas! <laughs> I thought they were cookies, but I never what kind of cookie they were. Albert, I just wrote down homemade homemade baked cookies. And Amaru, I think both of my answers were wrong. I said cookies, then I went to brownie. Yeah, uh, the answer is pies. They're oh. all they're all little pies. Oh, so right, yeah, everybody loses a point on that one. Uh, so that have means I hit zero yet, Tim? you have one point left, buddy. <laughs> so, you got it, um, you got it Am over. Amaru stays in the lead, one point ahead, twenty-one to twenty. As we get into the next question, what does Umbridge name the group of students led by Filch that enforce the rules she sets up in Hogwarts in the Order of the Phoenix? Umbridge, by far one of the best villains, I think, in a series. Absolutely great. Uh, but also, you want to just five, four, three, two. All right, that's Maggie's second repeat. What does Umbridge name the group of students led by Filch? that enforce the rules she sets up at Hogwarts in the Order of the Phoenix. Funny enough, when I quizzed this on um, the spider, the hobbit, whatever his name is, he goes, I know this because of the video game, which confused me uh, that he would have uh, played the Wii video game, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, but it's fair. It's fair. You play the game together. Oh, well, that makes a lot of sense. But I don't remember. Five, it's so good for him. Three, <laughs> two, one. We're going to start with Boatman. Face me in war zone, cowards. <laughs> with that, Boatman's been eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> he hit zero points. Boatman, thank you. Lucas. They're called the Inquisitorial Squad. Mm -hmm. Albert. Umbridge and Forcer Crew. Uh, Amaru. The Inquisitorial Squad. Maggie. Yeah, I just said student forcers. All right. So Lucas and Amaru hit that one. 
All right. So uh, Amaru is now in the lead with 22. Let's get into the next question. What spell does McGonagall use in order to bring the statues to life and defend the school during the Battle of Hogwarts? I want to shout out again Mr. Uh, Caleb Boatman for <laughs> sacrificing himself <laughs> for the cause. <laughs> Five, four, three. Repeat. All right, that's going to be the first repeat for Albert. What spell does McGonagall use in order to bring the statues to life and defend the school during the Battle of Hogwarts? Lucas still has two repeats, as does Albert, Amaro, and Maggie both have one left. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's start with Maggie. I'm sorry, what? All right, uh, Lucas. That's the shield charm. Prior totem locomotor. Um, okay, let's go to Albert. Pyre Totem Locomotor. And Amaru. Pyre Totem Locomotor. Yep, oh, we can accept those. Those are all right, except for Maggie. So, Lucas, Albert, Amaru, hitting. All right, next question. Harry sees a Patronus in the form of what? In the woods, in the Deathly Hallows. Part one. Uh, this is going to be one of those uh, gimmies after that last question that I thought was going to be harder than it was, but three of the four people hit it. So It's such yeah. a good moment in that movie. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's start with Lucas. It's a doe. Albert. A doe. Amaru. Anytime I can tell Snape to kick rocks, go kick rocks, man. Go. And Maggie. All right. We are on to the final question. Name four characters other than Harry and Dumbledore on the clock tower the night of Dumbledore's death. Give you a little extra time because you're naming four. Besides Harry and Dumbledore are the ones that Besides are... It's Harry and Dumbledore. Name four other characters that are on the clock tower. Do you need, like, full names? No, I don't need... Like, you don't have to say Harry Potter. You could say Harry, but obviously Harry's excluded, but... All right. Looking for an answer in five, four, three, two... One pens down. Let's go to Albert first. Uh, Snape, Draco Malfoy, Bellatrix, the Strange, and Fenrir Greyback. Amaro, I forgot Fenrir's name, so I said Draco, Bellatrix, Snape, and Scabio. Uh, let's go to Maggie. I said Draco, Snape, Bellatrix, and Greyback. And Lucas, I said Severus Snape, Amicus Carol, Electo Carol, and Bellatrix the Strange. And your winner, Amaru Moses, with a final score of 23 points. And, uh, yeah, so Amaru wins it, 23 points. Um, Maggie close behind with 20. Um, Albert ends with 19 and Lucas ends with, uh, I believe 19 as well. So, uh, I have them tied there. So, uh, yeah, this was, uh, this was a great match. I'm going to start, uh, just quick. We'll, we'll, we'll just have a little round discussion here. We're not going to like do full post match with everybody, but Amaru, you won the wizarding world exhibition. We did this in under an hour and there wasn't a tie. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling good. I, I thought Maggie wouldn't miss a question after she took the lead. So happy about that. And, um, bones is the closest synonym to skeleton. So I will take it. That's good. true. That's true. 
Um, Maggie, you came in second. Yeah. How are you feeling? That was a goal of yours. I'm feeling it? okay. Um, I have a question though. Did we all get the last question right? I don't. I can't hear a word you're saying. What? Did we all get the last question right? Everybody except Amaru, I believe. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Everyone except tomorrow hit that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel okay. Um, going 10 out of 10 in Fantastic Beasts is kind of nice. But I was literally only because I was looking at the wikis this morning. So the wikis are helpful. Um, yeah, it was fun. Cool. Uh, Lucas and Albert, you guys were tied. Lucas, you struggled in Fantastic Beasts. You came back in round three. How are you feeling? I mean, credit to everyone. It's a little frustrating because, like, if I look at that round two, if I play even average – I'm much closer to winning this match than I am right now because, you know, comparison to the rounds, I played really well. Uh, yeah, but, like, I've got – remembering Fantastic Beasts. Who wants to do that? Nick to it, really. <laughs> uh, and, Albert, how about you? Uh, also playing very, very well, tying for third with 19 points. That was actually my plan. I know I probably cannot outscore you guys in Harry Potter, so I was trying to study Fantastic Beasts. Didn't didn't work out, definitely, but uh, then, it, it, was, it was still fun regardless. Uh, yeah, it would. I, I think it would have been a lot worse if we had uh, done the gain a point, lose a point in Fantastic. Except Oops. for Maggie, Maggie, Ma Maggie, and Maggie did very well in Fantastic Beasts. But and then let's let's not forget uh, the Golden Child, uh, Caleb Boatman. Thank you for stepping in. You ended up scoring zero points. You did well in round one. You did very well in round one. Because those are the Harry Potter movies that I actually really like. And those are the ones that were worth the least points and got the least amount of questions comparative to Fantastic Beast. But um, I know who directed the Oxbow incident, so I'm the real winner. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right. Well, uh, that has been the uh, Wizarding World uh, exhibition match. Um, it's an exhibition match, so uh, Amaru does not get to take home a golden snitch or anything like that, but he gets to feel the pride and joy of, uh, of winning uh, the exhibition match. So, uh, guys, thank you so much for watching this. Check out the other matches that came out this weekend and be on the lookout for more fun stuff happening around on Fandom Fights and Multiplex Entertainment as a whole. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later. We are so glad you came. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye-bye. Remember, please discard all candy wrappers and popcorn containers in the nearest trash receptacle. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Are they all gone? Uh, is, is, there, is everybody gone? <laughs> huh? Good.